Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. So the video today is on this 2013 Fiat 500. Not sure which engine is on this. Honestly, the engine is not important because the issue has nothing to do with the engine. So, the car, as the thumbnail or the title will might suggest, uh, the problem is nothing to do with the engine. So this car came to me from a different, from a garage that uh, had the car in there for a service. Now, I don't know if the car went there for a service because of that issue that I will show you in a minute, or if the car went there for a normal service and then they were asked to look at this. Um, they couldn't really do it. So anyway, they asked me to look at this and this is the problem. Um, just before I show you the, the, the issue, let me tell you that I've done a little bit of work uh, off camera. Uh, which I will take you through everything 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 I've done the reason why I've done it is because of the weather so to do the checks now um, it would be a little bit tricky so uh, no long ago the raining uh, the rain was a little bit kind of stopped so I did all these checks before I start recording but as I said I'll take through everything everything I've done so you can understand exactly where we are at this moment so let me start the engine and I will show you what the problem is. So I start the engine and you're going to see that in no time the mileage is going to start to flash. Uh, if you are watching this video um, or if you know a little bit about, about Fiat, you will know what that means. So that means either the car is seeing a module that has not been part, is not being configured uh, on the network or there is a module missing on the network. Uh, I think I know which one is uh, of these two. I will show you in a minute. But the reason why the, the clock is flashing and the date is wrong, today is I think 20 of November 2020. So that's wrong, the time is now uh, 13 minutes past midnight. Anyway, the reason why is that is because the first thing I've done was start with the basics. So the first thing I've done, uh, especially being a Fiat, uh, was disconnect the battery, leave it off for about 10 minutes and plug it back in. Um, that actually did something, but it didn't fix the problem. But it did something which I will um, I will explain in a second. Anyway, so that didn't, didn't resolve the problem. Mile is still flashing, we still have the same thing. The next thing I've done was check the fuses under the bonnet, all good. Check the fuses over there, all good. Now, when I disconnect the battery, one of the things I've seen happening is, which is not happening now, so I have a USB uh, flash drive now. And by the way, the reason why I'm gonna show you this is because I've scanned the car, which probably I'm jumping ahead of myself now. So you already know what the problem is most likely. Anyways, just let me show you here. When I go there to my IPC, okay. So I think you know exactly now, guys, where what, why I've showed you this USB flash. So when I put this USB flash here, which by the way, the USB is part of that module, CTM telematics module. So when I push it in. There is a little LED right here at the top and you're gonna see that nothing happens. Okay? Now, when I first connect the battery and came back in, I started the car and I pushed this in and it flashed for a, like, I think two times and then went off, but it never flashed again. So there is literally no power to this USB port. So, UPC, sorry, IPC, so an instrument cluster reports that fault um, for no communications uh, with the CTM module. If I go to my body control module, you have configuration, uh, check procedure configuration failed, incorrect component installed, which is actually not that. What actually missing is that uh, is that the um, what to call it uh, what it actually means is that is that there is a module that is missing um, and that's why I said from the two either there's a module 
that has been installed and not configured or is missing in this case is is, is missing because uh, it says is uh, the configuration failed or incorrect component installed the, the the component is actually not on the network and i will show you in a second uh, i think that's it i think what's on the on here uh, surely it's nothing to do with this i guess let me just check what we have on the steering battery voltage most likely when I disconnected the battery possibly anyway the reason why I, I know is the CTM because if you look the CTM module is not on my list on an auto scan and if I come on a control unit and I try to scan it's not here is on if yeah, there is if I try to start to scan my CTM I will get that lovely message okay now, if the problem is actually, so obviously we, we could easily do a proxy alignment and remove the CTM from the network and that would stop flashing. However, I strongly believe the owner actually wants everything working. So that's what we're gonna try to do uh, because it's what makes sense. Um, so yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is locate the module, uh, check power and grounds, even though fuses are good, but you never know. So it's going to be check power and powers and grounds, uh, make sure everything is, is, is okay uh, on that, and um, move on from there. But yeah, so no communications with the, the CTM module. Right, gave this garage a ring and um, because I want to know if they want this uh, proper fixed or if they just want that to stop flashing. Um, the reason is because sometimes people are not interested on certain stuff. Uh, maybe the owner could not really care about the CTM module but and we could just uh, do a proxy alignment and remove that module from the network which would resolve that flashing problem. However, uh, the lady that owns this car actually wants everything proper fixed. Um, actually, they complain, interestingly enough, now that I spoke with them over the phone, the lady actually complained that I used to walk in and the phone used to connect to the car and that stopped happening. Wonder why? So, there is no communications with the module. So, it could be that we have a faulty module, we don't know yet. For the time being, uh, we're going to locate the module and start to do some checks. And just just before we move into that, uh, just let me show you that the actually car uh, obviously is fitted with the thingy. Just to show you, it is still configured correctly, so it's not like if the car lost the configuration. Uh, so CTM module present. So the configuration for the proxy is okay. Uh, the configuration, the ECU configuration information is still okay. So it's not like something happened and he lost it or whatever. So it's still okay. So so yeah, let's go, let's now gonna look for that module and carry on from there. Okay, and the weather is definitely not helping today. Uh, right, I got to the module. So the module leaves here behind this panel. And you can't believe what just happened to make my life a little bit harder. So the seat belt goes right here. And when I was taking it out, because obviously I need to... Where's the thingy? Because I obviously need to uh, take so I can pull the panel back. The bloody bolt snapped. Look at that. I just couldn't believe it. It had to be a Fiat. Bloody hell. Anyway, the module lives right there. There it is. Is this black module here. So we are going to take it off. And they had to use rivets. Oh my god. Come on, Fiat. Right, so there is a blue... There's a plug here at the back, I think. Let's just... Uh, I'm trying to take it off, just check the plug itself. Yeah, the plug... The plug is cleaned. Uh, so... I don't even know if I'm going to check powers and well, I'd love to check powers and grounds, obviously. Yeah, if I find diagrams for these, really. Uh, just a quick note: these modules are quite prone to fail, anyway. It's a quite known issue, so I have a feeling that most likely it's going to be a faulty module. Uh, so yeah, let's kind of uh, drill these out, take the module out, and do a couple of checks. Oh dear, I can't believe that bolt snapped. 
Okay, module is on the bench. Um, at first glance, everything looks well. There's nothing burned, um, so nothing looks too bad. Uh, the board is quite clean anyway, so everything looks okay to me. Um, well, because I don't know, I don't know because the unit is not like if the unit is completely well. The unit is failing, obviously, so I'm just going to measure a couple things that are more sort of obvious. Uh, I might do a reflow on these uh, memory chips and on the processor, perhaps, maybe. I might do a reflow on those, and that's about it, really. There's not a lot much more I can do. Um, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Uh, see if we find anything, if anything is really obvious. Uh, and we'll go from there. So let's kind of do a little bit of uh, dig into this and see if we can repair it. Uh, the thing is, if even if I'm scared running, um, how long is gonna last? It's one of those things. I can either, but also at the same time, if I buy a second-hand unit, how long is gonna last? These units are quite prone to fail. Uh, I don't know if there is a, a revised hardware that has been sort of fixed uh, that fixed this uh, common failure whatever not really sure I haven't dug uh, I haven't really dig into it so for now let's get just gonna do a few measurements and see what we find okay so did a few measurements couldn't really find nothing wrong with the module or I couldn't really find any uh, components that would show anything uh, bad um, did a let me see if I can take these off one hand I think I do okay uh, did a reflow on these uh, uh, chips on this uh, on this processor on these memories etc on this side on the Bluetooth module as well which I think is this one which one is the Bluetooth module I'm not really sure now uh, I think it's this one here. Anyway, I reflow all this stuff, um, did the same thing. The, the module is definitely powering up because one is connected in there. Uh, this chip here and these ones here, they warm up a little bit. So there's something going on with this module, but they are quite prone to fail. So guys, it's, if it is a, a, a corrupted software or a flash, whatever, this is going to be nearly impossible. I, I'm not really sure. So I'm not going to waste too much time with this. Uh, I got hold, but just before, just before we go uh, forward and spend some money, um, I got hold some diagrams. So we're going to quick check just power and grounds. So really easy. There is two powers that come straight from those fuses, and there is one ground, which I will take you through. So we're going to check that. If we do have that, I think it's time to get a new module. Okay, I'm not really sure what you are looking at right now because the camera is... No, let me put that in there somehow so it doesn't be on the way. Because I can't see the screen of the camera. Uh, hopefully you are um, seeing the screen, the plug. So this is really easy. 16 and 32 is my powers. Pin 16 comes from fuse F36, uh, 10 amp to pin 16. So pin 16... So 1, 14, 15, 16. That should be 12 volts where I have a ground. Over there, key is on by the way. So there we go. 11.82 volts, which is fine. The next is pin 32, which is the pin right opposite to it. I should have another battery voltage or 11.80. That's fine. And then we have a ground on pin 15, which is this one here. So if I go, oh sorry, so if I do this, and I do that, I should have 11.82 volts. So I think that's it really. There is no other powers or grounds and we have a kernel line on pin 14 and 30. I think we might be able to check that actually. Uh, yeah, we might check that. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, so I do apologize for any shaking on the camera, but okay, first of all, I decide to have that. Oh dear, that would be better to actually load test the circuits. So, there it is. Can you see the light? Pin 32, pin 16. So we have voltage. Now, let's gonna check. What we're gonna check now, we're gonna check the ground. 
which I'm gonna need. Uh, damn, I don't have accessories here. I'm gonna check these. Hold on. Uh, mm, now I know I'm gonna do it. Hold on. Do it like this. Like this. Put the other end. Sorry, guys. I just don't wanna have to go and get more. So, pin. It's 15, isn't it? On the ground. Yeah, pin 15 is the ground, which is this one here. So if I now put the ground, how I'm gonna test that in there? Oh, crap. Oh dear, how I'm gonna do this? Uh, okay, so that, now I need to test the ground in there. Will this touch in there? Hold on. It might work. There we go, ground. So I know it's a little bit dodgy, but basically I'm, I'm, I'm connecting the test ball between the power and the grounds on the Ashley plug. So as you've seen, we do have also a good ground in there. Next, we're gonna check just the can line, wherever that is. And if we have communications there, then, <clears throat> then we're gonna call it a module. Okay, there is definitely now a little bit of checking because I had to start the engine. Battery was a little bit low as you've seen. So my communication lines are, it looks like it's a low speed CAN network. Uh, it's gonna be pin 14 and pin 30. We're gonna do one at a time. So pin 14 is gonna be this one here. I'm not sure how I have the thing set up, but probably wrong. Yeah, probably wrong. So it's 200 millivolts. Uh, 20 milliseconds, so let's gonna go to voltage to volts. There we go, that's looking better. So from zero to five, which is fine. I'm gonna put it a little bit bigger, okay. Uh, let me put this somewhere there. Let me put more, oh, less time so we can see a little bit better the, there we go. What am I doing? 10 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds. There we go. So we do have communications on this. Let me put it like this so we can see. I know it doesn't look okay. So we do have communications here, 0 to 5 volts spot on. The other pin is pin 30, which I think is the opposite. Oh, now I lost the ground. Which is the opposite pin. There we go. So this, <laughs> theoretically guys, I should have, I should be scoping the low and high at the same time so we'd see that they are the same. But I don't, I mean, guys, nice. it's no point really. I know I'm not doing this very well. It's really awkward to work here. Oh dear. Anyway, we do have communications on both. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna call it a module guys. I'm quite confident that's gonna be the issue. So, I think I'll see you when I get the new module. Or the used module, by the way. Um, just a quick note, there is several revisions of this module. Um, so you don't need to go for the exact same part number. Um, I might leave a list somewhere here of the part modules I found to be all sort of compatible with each other. So I'll leave a list here somewhere uh, so you can look at them. Uh, and that's it really, so let's gonna get a module and go from there. Hey, okay, and in the meantime, and just to keep you up to date, I uh, drilled the bolt and uh, already uh, re-thread or clean the thread on this. Got hold of a new bolt. Um, I had to get this washer because I didn't have a bolt with such a big washer like the original one but these will do the job just fine so this is sorted just need to clean all this so another problem done so literally now it's waiting for the module I already found one for about 90 quid they are not cheap but is what it is so I'll just wait for it and then I, I really need to clean this uh, swarfs uh, but that's it guys so far so good was not that bad in the end surprising surprise but yeah that's where we are at the moment 
Okay, and the new module just arrived. Okay. Uh, I think it's a different part number if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure it is. I think it's a different part number, but as I said, I left you all the part numbers. Anyway, um, at the moment, I still have the old module plugged in, as you can see. Uh, and, um, and I just want to show you something because I do believe that once I plug that one in, I still need to do a proxy alignment on the car um, to obviously make sure that module will match the rest of the car, etc. Uh, but what I wanted to show you with that module plugged in is uh, through the USB. Uh, what I want to show you is this. So let me show you this because I, I, I don't think I've showed you this in the past. Let me plug it in. So as you can see, nothing happens when I plug this in. So now I'm going to plug the new module. And I'll show you the difference. Okay, so the new module or used module is now in place. Um, the mileage, I believe, is going to carry on flashing because I think we still need to do an alignment. So it went away because of those message, but I think it's going to carry on flashing. But what I wanted to show you now, if this module is good, I haven't tried yet, is that this should carry on flashing. Uh, Oh, look at the difference. See that? So he's loading the USB uh, flash drive or he's looking, he's scanning the flash drive. Uh, yes, as I said, the mileage is still flashing as expected. So let's gonna plug in the Maxisys and do a proxy alignment on this. Okay, and the first thing, I already did it, but I'll do it again so you can see, is that we have communications with our module now, which we didn't have before. Um, Trouble codes. Yeah, stored, stored most likely from the previous car. Let's gonna clear that. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so let me see where is the uh, proxy alignment. Um, and actually, let me go there on my EPC, see what we have in there. See if there's anything for lost communication with city stored. So that's now stored. Okay, actually, I'm gonna do something here. Let's quick do a auto scan and clear all the codes. Okay, so I uh, had the engine running just to charge a little bit of the battery and while I was looking for this. So we have a proxy alignment under the BCM. So the BCM at the moment has two turbo codes. One is that, which is stored, lost communication with the CTM, and obviously the check configuration failed, uh, for, um, which obviously is because of the CTM. Now, there is a proxy alignment here. Uh, there is, but I do strongly believe that this proxy alignment is for you to align the BCM to the entire car. Uh, I don't think that's what we need to do because the BCM already has all the modules enabled uh, and all that stuff as you have seen earlier back on the video uh, when you come here so as you can see there so it says me in there that the radio the T TPM and CTM prox proxy status failed but when you come down here you're gonna see that my CTM active it says yes so this is this is is obviously then we have configuration codes test codes which i believe um all these will be related to the bc to the the to the proxy alignment now however we only replace that module so i think the proxy alignment will have to be done on the ctm module i might be wrong i never done this before there it is so that's what I'm going to do. Let me actually turn the engine off. Key on. There we go. Let's press OK. OK. Cycle ignition. Uh, and press cycle ignition. And press OK. Let's 
Let's come out. Let's go back to my BCM. See if my code is gone. It should have gone because the mileage is not flashy anymore. There is. Job done. Let's clear these DTCs. Okay. And we should have... There's an, a code in there on my electric power steering. Let's see what's that for. Just quickly. Ah, that's fine. I think we cleared this back early on the video, I think. Anyway. So that's done. So no codes on the car. It didn't detect those two modules, not to worry about. All I want to check now is... There's no Bluetooth phone connected. Haha! -ha! That's what I was looking for. So obviously is now everything's working. Mileage is not flashing anymore. Uh, that's job done really. So I'm just going to put everything back on. Back together now. Uh, oh dear. Um, and that's about it really. So in the end, a bad module. This is quite of a common issue on these cars. Um, yeah, this it's a common problem. So guys, still, I hope you have enjoyed the video. That you might have learned something uh, uh, on, on, on this. Um, and again, yes, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do have any questions, any comments, please, please put them below. And like always, thanks for watching.